Let's go ahead and talk about combs. On your screen, you're going to see an example of a problem where you're going to have to use trigonometric principles in order to be able to solve the problem. It says if AB equals 11.3 centimeters and angle ABC is 53 degrees, calculate the radius of the cone. Well, clearly we have an image, we have a, a drawing, we have a diagram that we can use to visualize. We can see that DC represents the radius right here of the problem. We also know that AB is 11.3 and because this is a cone, that is our slant height and that means that BC is also going to be 11.3 centimeters. So what we have to work with right now is angle ABC. Angle ABC is the entire top angle of that cone. It is 53 degrees. One of the things that we have been working with during the series of 3D figures is trying to identify right triangles or any type of triangle within the images, within the drawings, so that we can use trigonometric properties in order to be able to apply them to those triangles and then get the solutions for these problems. So I'm going to go ahead and create a right triangle because I keep telling you it's always a great idea to redraw these so that you get a clear picture of what you are doing. At the very top where angle B is right here, remember that we took angle ABC and we cut it in half. So now I'm going to work with 26.5 degrees. Then I have D, which is my 90 degree angle, and C. BC is 11.3. So my job is to figure out the radius, which is basically DC. Because this is a right triangle, one of the things that I can use are the trigonometric ratios, SOHCAHTOA, sine, cosine, tangent, and that is exactly what we're going to work with here. We're going to start by identifying the angle, which is 26.5, According to that angle, that makes the radius the opposite side. The hypotenuse is going to be 11.3. Remember, the hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle. It's the longest side of the right triangle. So now I have to determine what is going to connect opposite with hypotenuse. And opposite hypotenuse, that is going to be sine. So I'm going to set up the problem as the sine of 26.5 is equal to opposite, which is R, over hypotenuse, which is 11.3. Take your calculators. Let's multiply by 11.3 on both sides. So we get 11.3 times the sine of 26.5. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode, and you should get an answer of approximately 5.04 centimeters. So this means that the radius is going to be approximately 5.04 centimeters long. Okay, let's take a look at this second problem. It says VAOB is a right circular cone with radius 20 centimeters and a slant height of 60 centimeters. Calculate the vertical height VO, calculate angle AVB. So this problem is very similar to the one that we just finished doing right now. In this case, I'm going to once again work with this right triangle on the right hand side of the cone. I'm going to take the time to redraw it on the side of the screen so that we can very clearly see exactly what it is that we're working with. The slant height is 60 centimeters and the radius is 20 centimeters. Notice that VO is the vertical height of this cone, therefore it is a 90 degree angle and they have also gone ahead and shown us the 90 degree angle by that little square that's right there on your screen. So our job is to find VO. We're going to do this by applying the Pythagorean theorem. We've seen over and over again how in a right triangle, whenever you have two side lengths, you can go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the third one. So in this case, we're going to set up the problem 20 squared plus VO squared is equal to 60 squared because 60 is the hypotenuse and you have to be very careful with that when filling in the Pythagorean theorem so you don't make a mistake. So 20 squared is 400 plus VO squared is equal to 60 squared which is going to be 3600. Let's go ahead and subtract 400 from both sides. 
we get that VO squared is equal to 3200. Take the square root of 3200 and we get that VO is approximately 56 0.6 centimeters, which makes sense because the slant height, which is the longest side of that right triangle, is 60. So we know that our answer for VO has to be less than that. And so the vertical height VO is 56.6 centimeters. Now the second part of the question, part B, says to calculate angle AVB. That is the entire angle up here. In the previous problem, they had given it to us and then we decided to take half of it to work with the right triangle. In this case we're kind of going backwards. So what I'm going to do in the right triangle that you see on the right on the screen is that I'm going to label angle OVB as theta. Because this is a right triangle once again I can use trigonometric ratio SOCATOA to be able to determine a relationship that will connect theta with these sides. Opposite of theta is 20 and the hypotenuse of course is 60. Which one of these trig ratios connects opposite with hypotenuse? Sine. So the sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Only when we're looking for the angle are we going to press second or shift in the calculator to figure out what's called the arc sine. So in your calculators right now, go ahead and press second sine of 20 divided by 60, and you're going to get that theta is approximately 19.47 degrees. Now, of course, that is not our final answer. Remember that our job is to find angle AVB. So we have to take theta and we have to multiply that answer by two. Keep the entire decimal in your calculator so that you don't have round off error. And so the final answer, if I multiply this by two, it is going to be approximately 38.9 degrees. So that means that angle AVB is approximately 38.9 degrees. Okay, so now we get to this third problem. A rescue helicopter is hovering 156 meters above the sea. It is dark and the helicopter is shining a light down onto the surface of the sea. If the diameter of the cone formed by the beam of the light is 140 meters, what is the angle at the apex of the cone? All right, so once again, we have a cone, but our job is going to be to work with one of these triangles, either the right one or the left one, so that we are able to figure out the angle at the apex of the cone. One of the things that we know in this problem is that the diameter of the cone formed by the beam of the light is 140 meters. The diameter is twice the radius. That tells me the radius is going to be half of 140, which is 70 meters. So that's information that we're going to need when we redraw this triangle. Notice that I have placed theta at the top because we're interested in the angle at the apex of the cone. We know the height is 156 and we also know the radius is 70, which is half of the diameter, which is 140. Let's go ahead and work with our trigonometric ratios SOCATOA, sine, cosine, tangent, once again. According to theta, 70 is our opposite side and 156 is the adjacent side. In this case, we do not know the hypotenuse and we don't necessarily need to find it in order to get our answer. So we're going to go ahead and set up our work as the tangent of theta is equal to opposite, which is 70, over adjacent. So here theta is the arc tangent of 70 over 156. Take your calculator, second tan of 70 divided by 156, and we're going to get that theta is about 24.166629, and it continues. Once again, because we want the entire angle, then that means that we need to make, we need to take this angle and multiply that by two. When I multiply by two, I get approximately 48.3 degrees. So my answer is 48.3 degrees. And now for our final problem. Each of the following three containers has a volume of a thousand cubic centimeters. 
Shape A is a cube of side 20. Shape B is a cylinder of diameter 20 centimeters. Shape C is a right cone of diameter 20 centimeters. Work out the heights of shapes B and C. All right, so the information that we know is that we know the volume is 8,000 cubic centimeters. Shape B and shape C, the information that we know for both of them is the diameter, which is also measured in centimeters, which is great because we don't have to worry about any conversions. Our job is to figure out the heights of the shapes. So let's go ahead and start with the cylinder. Find the formula for the volume of a cylinder, which is pi radius squared times the height. We're going to fill in the information that we know. We know volume is 8,000. Pi, we're going to write as pi because remember there is a pi button in the calculator that we can use. The radius in this case has to be half of the diameter. The diameter is 20, so half of the diameter is going to be 10. So in this case, the radius is 10 squared, and then the height is exactly what we are looking for. This means that 8,000 is equal to 100 pi times the height. Let's go ahead and divide by 100 pi on both sides. Take your calculators, do 8,000, divide it by 100 times pi, and you're going to get that the height is approximately 25.5, if you round, because you're going to get 25.46. So about 25.5 centimeters is going to be the height of the cylinder. So now moving on to find the height of the cone. For the cone, let's go ahead and look up the volume formula. The volume of a cone is one third pi radius squared times the height. Notice how similar it is to the cylinder formula, except for the fact that it is one third. So now we're going to fill in the information. We have 8,000 is equal to one third pi. Here, once again, the diameter is 20, so the radius is 10 squared times the height. Before I divide by 100 pi, I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. I get 24,000 is equal to 100 pi times h. That is so that I could get rid of the 1 third. And now I'm going to go ahead and divide by 100 pi. 24,000 divided by 100 pi is approximately equal to 76.4 centimeters. And so we have figured out that the height of the cylinder, shape B, is about 25.5 centimeters, and then the height of shape C is about 76.4 centimeters. Hope you found this video helpful. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more help with math so that you can say, yes, I can do math with confidence. Until next time, thanks for watching.